Hi, if you've been following my blog posts and uh, recent forum threads, you'll know I've been uh, looking at uh, designing and building, or specking and building, a new video editing uh, PC. One that's, uh, you know, as low a noise as possible and quite reasonably cost under a thousand dollars. And the parts, they're finally in. So, I'm going to assemble this sucker. Fingers crossed. Hopefully, I don't release the magic smoke. I haven't built my own PC in, I don't know, 10, 15 years or something. I used to build my own PCs, used to be really into that sort of thing, but now, uh, no, I've been into uh, notebooks for the last uh, 10 years, and um, really, so this is my first attempt at assembling a modern PC. We'll give it a go. And here are all the parts. The entire system cost, as I said, uh, under a thousand bucks. Yes, I'm an absolute uh, tight ass. I know that uh, you know some people pay that for just a bloody video card these days. Some of the gaming uh, fanboys. But anyway, um, uh, I wanted as low a noise as possible, so I've got a uh, Silencio 550 mid tower. I'll uh, talk about all these uh, individually. And what else have we got? We've got a um, a Zeus uh, P8Z77V. Motherboard, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, high-end uh, Z77 uh, chipset that was under like a, under 150 bucks. I've got some uh, Corsair 16 gigabyte, uh, two 8 gigabyte uh, modules in there. And uh, no, I didn't pay the uh, sticker price on these things. I've got a um, Intel. There was much debate on the EV blog forum about the uh, processor, folks. Should I go for the AMD 8 core? Should I go for the um, core Intel core? Uh, i7. Well, I went for the Intel because yes, it basically is better all round, even though it's more expensive. I got the i7 3770K. The K version is uh, the unlocked one, so I can overclock this thing if I want. Um, I've got a Samsung uh, 120 gigabyte uh, solid state drive. Uh, what else have we got? We've got a Cooler Master. Lots of debate over the cooling solution for this. Um, I went for the Hyper uh, 212 from uh, Cooler Master, same brand as the uh, case. And uh, this is, um, not only is it quite reasonably priced, it's like under uh, 50 bucks, but um, it is uh, by some uh, by measurements um, I've uh, seen on the net. Uh, this is the quietest fan on the market when it's in low speed mode and it's not too bad in high speed um, either so we'll give that a go yeah bottom of the range are Corsair VS series 650 power supply yes I didn't I just wanted the cheapest in stock uh, power supply they basically had there I wasn't too fussy so yeah fanboys rant on rant on I could have possibly got a more uh, silent one but we'll see how it goes with my soundproofed uh, case uh, should be all right and just a cheap uh, Zeus uh, 24 speed uh, DVD writer and um i've got some um, extra hard drives uh to go in there as well that i had existing so let's crack all this stuff open and uh, start assembling and here's the uh cooler master silencio 550 case uh why did i go for this one uh, a couple of reasons one was that i of course i wanted a uh, silent in quote marks machine yes i know the silent fanboys are gonna jump down my throat and say this isn't a silent solution because there's fans in here but uh Anyway, I just wanted a no low noise solution. So this is a soundproofed case, hence the name Silencio. Um, and it got uh, reasonably good uh, reviews out there. And um, also it's cheap. It's like, a, it was just on like a hundred bucks, which is, you know, 50 bucks cheaper than sort of other comparable cases. So not only is it silent, which I like, but it also um, uh, has a top mounted, here it is, top mounted SD. Uh, fast SD card slot, which is because I edit video every day. I uh, carry my HD video files from the lab back home. This is going to be my uh, home PC where I do my video editing. So I can just conveniently reach now, whack in the SD card. It's all done. I know it's a small little thing, but you know, I just didn't want to, you know, I don't want to have to open the door and reach down and stick the uh, thing in an SD card slot. I have a cable hanging out the back to an SD card reader. It's just a little nice touch. So I, uh, so I like that. So I was sold on the uh, soundproofing, the fact that it was 100 bucks and an SD card slot. So we will check it out. And apparently, uh, which is really good as well, it comes with a, um, a uh, SATA dock. Like it comes with a docking 
uh, station as well, so I can do backups. I can just whack a drive in there. You know, I know you can just buy these and insert them, but hey, it comes with it. Fantastic. So, uh, you know, I, I think that was an awesome uh, no-brainer choice, really, for a hundred bucks. We've got, uh, is there filtering in there? No, not really, you know. Oh, well, you've got the foam uh, on the front as well. It's got a huge fan in there, presumably quite uh, silent. I'll talk about those later. I may have a replacement for that, but uh, yeah, um, it, just a mid-tower case. Um, I'm not doing anything fancy with it. I'll have a CD drive in there, um, and that's, you know, that's about all she wrote, but that SATA dock, I reckon, is going to come in handy. And on the back here, we've got uh, seven uh, slots. Down here, we've got uh, water cooling uh, or, you know, uh, cable ports or uh, something like that. In fact, there's another one up here as well. Um, uh, fan uh, on the back. I, it's a Cooler Master uh, brand fan, so um, I may replace that. Depends on the uh, noise and, you know, nothing uh, fancy at all. So, and here we go. We've got the uh, side panel. It's got the uh, acoustic foam in there. It, it looks reasonably... Looks like reasonable quality dense foam. I don't think it's you know necessarily just uh, uh, you know entirely uh, cheap crappy stuff. So that's pretty good, and it's got uh, foam on the uh, backside in there as well. So it's basically foam on acoustic uh, dampening foam on the front, the sides, and the back. I mean this thickness uh, foam, you know, really isn't going to do much for your uh, low frequency. Uh, stuff you know it's you know it's uh, attenuation of low frequency under a couple of hundred hertz isn't going to be um, you know that great but it's uh, better than nothing because the uh, dampening I've done uh, videos on this the uh, on how to make acoustic uh, foam paneling which I should probably link in actually um, the thickness of the foam uh, is basically going to determine the uh, uh, low frequency uh, attenuation of the thing so. Um, Let's have a look in here. Apparently, they've, it supports uh, two and a half inch solid state uh, hard drives, which I've got, and it's got USB 3.0 in there and uh, cabling. It looks like it's got cabling installed as well. We've got a speaker, a whole bunch of uh, cable ties, and other screws for the motherboards and things, presumably, and a whole bunch of rails for the um, hard drives. And all the internal connectors, they're all labelled. Nice touch, HD audio, AC97, there it is, USB. It's USB uh, 3.0 uh, compatible uh, front connector, power LED, and uh, stuff like that, reset switch. So all nicely labelled, good touch. And I kind of like the look of these. Look at that, just uh, lock open. So it looks like you don't need any screws for your uh, CD drives and uh, uh, hard drives that you insert in there. You just go lock open. Brilliant. And I think it's the same for the uh, rails in here as well. They're uh, not, you know, uh, you don't need any screws. You just uh, slide the things in. And I think that's the same for all the internal uh, hard drive slots as well. They've just got these uh, pins. You don't screw them in. You just put them in the side of your hard drive and then just slide it in. Beautiful. Now, down the bottom of the case here for the power supply, they've got these little rubber grommets. Nice little uh, touch, little uh, vibration uh, dampeners for the fan inside the power supply. Very nice. And there's the internal uh, SATA docking station. Now this case can actually fit uh, three fans, but only two are fitted. So there's one here, as um, this is the front of the case, a spare uh, spot for a second fan there. And of course there's one on the back here. Now, um, uh, Pete Mitchell from the uh, forum, you saw in the uh, previous mailbag, sent me some uh, Noctua uh, fans in here. And apparently I, didn't recognize uh, the worth of these things and how spectacular they are at low noise some you know one of the quietest uh, fans on the market and how i should uh, bow in front of these things so sorry to you all you fanboys out there fanboys see what i did there beautiful anyway um yeah they're very grotty that's all the dust on them they are used but i might uh, clean them up and eventually uh, fit them in here but uh, for starters i'll just use the uh, stock fans which uh, come with the case and um, if they're solid enough well I'll just leave them um, otherwise I might uh, fit these uh, Noctua ones and there is the two and a half inch uh, drive 
bracket. Excellent. That will uh, suit my two and a half inch uh, solid state hard drive. And on the uh, underside of the motherboard uh, part of the case, we have a huge cutout here um, for to access the uh, heatsink after the board's been installed. Nice touch as well, but I think that's standard on all cases these days, isn't it? And here's the ASUS motherboard, the uh, P8Z77V. And one of the first things that struck me is just the thinness of the board. I was expecting maybe like a two millimeter motherboard, but there's, you know, actually some warp in that. And this board, it seems thinner than your standard 1.6. And, well, it's actually 1.5 just on one well yeah if i get it just on 1.5 so looks like they haven't got a standard 1.6 millimeter um stack up in there i mean you know this would be an eight or ten layer board or uh you know something like that minimum um but yeah i'm just uh, surprised at the uh flimsiness of it i guess i i don't know anyway if you take a look at the layout of the uh traces on here you see all of these they look like single uh, traces coming out here but they're all differential pairs all routed differential pairs this is the main uh, Z77 chipset under here and all the differential pairs running out to all the uh, PCI Express sockets Wow and you can see those there they are the uh, differential pairs they've got a minimum uh, spacing between each one there'd be a ground plane uh, layer absolutely directly under that and uh, Here's the uh, back of the processor over here. You can see some uh, serpentine uh, traces happening over there to get a, a correct matched uh, length and everything on that uh, on that specific pair in there. Whatever that pair happens to be, it needs to match all the it needs to match all something else, some other pair. And uh, they've tuned that using the serpentine traces. Ugh, brown solder mask. Yuck. And there's the LGA eleven fifty. Uh, socket. I've never uh, actually uh, operated one of these before. Important. Install processor first, then remove and keep the cover. Oh, no kidding. Oh, I like the sound of that GPU boost switch. And it's got a bunch of uh, 6 gigabit per second uh, SATA uh, interfaces as well. And it comes uh, actually with some uh, 6 gig uh, rated SATA cables in the box, a couple of those as well. Funky uh, heatsink for the uh, aluminium and blue anodized heatsink for the Z77 chipset. But really, there's hardly anything on these modern motherboards. It's all in the main chipset. You know, a bunch of power supply stuff around here, all the uh, in inductors and the bypass um, uh, filtering caps for the various uh, core voltages and stuff. But man. So why did I choose this uh, ASUS one over others? Well, uh, they've got a good uh, reputation and uh, it happened to be one of the cheapest ones that had the Z77 chipset. Or I think it was the cheapest one at my local store with the Z77 chipset. So sounded pretty good to me. Because one of the things I wanted uh, this for, like the Intel i7 uh, processor, it's got the integrated, some pretty kick-ass integrated graphics built in. Um, because I don't necessarily need, I've mentioned this on the forum and I won't go into details here, don't necessarily need a uh, GPU uh, video card for my video rendering. It's all CPU uh, intensive. So the inbuilt video card is more than enough and the i7 processor actually has the Intel QuickSync uh, video encoding technology as well. So um, yeah, I, I plan initially at least to um, use the um, integrated graphics on this thing and of course it's got uh, DVI, um, standard VGA and HDMI as well. I presume I can run uh, two monitors at once with that. We'll find out. They haven't really skimped on the port protection either. Um, there's quite a few poly switches uh, down here. There's at least five of them there I can count for the uh, USS 6, actually. Um, at least six poly switches on there to uh, protect the uh, power outs, presumably on the USB ports. And it comes with an I.O. connector uh, shield for the back of the case. Nice touch. All right, it's CPU installation time, and here's my Intel i7, the most expensive thing in the whole system, 350 bucks worth for this chip. And the stock uh, cooler, which everyone assures me is absolute uh, garbage, just noisy, and uh, you know, well, barely does the job if you just want to do word processing or something, it'll do fine. But apart from that, no. So I've been replacing that, and we're going to just install the processor and the third-party heatsink. And yes, folks, I am doing this on my uh, 
proper anti-static uh, rubber workbench and I do have my anti-static wrist strap on because this thing is worth 350 bucks I'm not taking any chances it does come in this uh, plastic though it'd be interesting to know if this is just uh, bog standard plastic or whether or not it's uh, um, ESD uh, treated I assume it would be um, you know because uh, I don't know how sensitive uh, modern processes like this are to uh, ESD, ESD these days, but I'm not taking any chances. Anyway, here it is, 350 bucks worth, the i7 3770K, 3.5 gig, will probably end up overclocking, and it's made in Costa Rica. Hi to all my viewers in Costa Rica, I'm sure there's a few. Um, and let's take this puppy out and uh, have a look at the bottom. And here are the pads, all 1150 of them or so, and uh, and they're just that, uh, pads, because we're going to have uh, contact balls inside the socket. And there's all the bypass uh, caps on the back of that. So this is like a uh, chip on board technology, uh, essentially, because the uh, die is attached to the uh, top side of the board. And uh, then we've got all our bypass stuff on the bottom. So there we go. And you can even see, looks like you can see the micro vias. In each of those pads they've actually got the micro vias right in the center by the looks of it yeah there we go you can see the vias on each pad there tiny little you know 0.1 millimeter or less and all these pads on the top side here must be uh, programming slash uh, test pads for production all right so let's whip this in and uh, we're going to take off the uh, got to lever that up like that first and then doo -doo -doo, look at that Awesome! And we can see all our uh, bypass caps in there. They've uh, got a few down in there. It's got to be right next to the, uh, uh, you know, the core power supply uh, pins, of course. Um, that way you get your lowest uh, loop system loop inductance and uh, your greatest uh, signal integrity. So what we need to do now is. Place this sucker in, pin 1, absolutely vital, there's the pin 1 marker down there, and the um, pin 1 is down in this corner down here, it tells you uh, on the top, pin 1, and uh, it also tells you that in the instructions. So, I'm going to place this gently in here, like this, ta-da, and I'm going to put that down, slide it across, and hopefully... Ooh. Oh, it's pretty tough. It's pretty tough. It's very scary, actually. This is a $350 chip. And, uh... Eh. No, I have heard that they require a bit of force, so... I'm, uh... Here we go. Come on. Under there like that. And then, ta-da, we take that off, and we're in one installed i7. Well, we haven't installed the uh, heatsink yet. And next up, we have our Corsair memory. Uh, I'll put this in now. Why not? Works at uh, 1.5 volts, version 3.24. Jeez, you're getting pretty specific there. Massive heatsink on it. I thought I actually ordered a low-profile version of these, actually. These are quite uh, tall, so hopefully they don't interfere with my heatsink. Ugh. Fingers crossed, anyway. Um, so these are uh, two 8 gig uh, modules, 1600 megahertz of vengeance. Ooh, sounds, you know, uh, appealing to the gamer market. Obviously, all those gamer fanboys. So uh, I'm going to uh, whack this in my board. No worries, I don't think it uh, matters um, which slot I put those. Well, they, they're pairs, um, obviously, but uh, I think I'll. Put it in, well, there's A and there's B, so I'll put it in A, which is the front one here. So, let's do it. And, uh, hopefully, yeah, that's, they're pretty darn tall. I mean, that's, uh, that's impressively tall. Oh, bit of force required on that. Get it in the right way, and we're in. So, yeah, they are massive. I mean, geez. Let's take a look at the height of that. Absolutely incredible so yeah as you can see it's you know it's fairly close to the uh, heatsink uh, bracket here so I'm not sure of the physical dimensions of my heatsink fingers crossed and here's my cooler master uh, heatsink the Evo 212 warning 
And please peel off this label before you use it. No kidding. Uh, yeah, you've got to get your heat uh, off there. Now, I love the uh, copper bars on these. They're, uh, they're a completely seamless uh, surface right over there, and that's important so uh, you uh, get as much surface area as possible onto those uh, copper heat pipes. And uh, very important, they just go up into this radiator block up here, and uh, then this fan just... Uh, blows it straight through and apparently, yes, as I said, um, it is um, the most silent fan on the market almost, like in the top one or two, uh, when the fan speed is set too low, which would be most of the, you know, the time using the machine idle and stuff like that, unless I'm doing uh, uh, video uh, rendering or uh, transcoding. So let's install this. Looks a bit complicated. And it comes with a whole bag of bits, including uh, all of these... Uh, uh, a bracket for the back, which we have to install first, and uh, a bag of uh, bits, including some thermal uh, paste, some screws for the top, and uh, a separate bag for uh, just in case you want to install it in the uh, LGA uh, 2011 socket. And apparently step one is to put these screws through there like that. Have they got any... Oh, they've got like a black... Maybe, yeah, they've got like a black washer on the bottom so they don't uh, scrape the traces which are very close to the holes by the way they're uh, they're quite close so put those through there but I, do, oh, I don't know how you hold those in place while you flip it over uh, it's yeah that's not gonna work come on give me a break and then this is supposed to uh, the bracket is supposed to go on the back like well I don't think it's is it like yep it's like that there we go is that it no that's not it this is where you've got to have like a third hand to sort of put the screws in and then rotate them and then they actually rotate and lock in place. That's actually not too bad at all. I rather think that's a bit clever but uh, yeah obviously. And then we've got four nuts on there and uh, thoughtfully they uh, realize that your average punter is not going to have a uh, socket of the right size. So just like Ikea they provide you a little uh, tool in there and you can just uh, tighten those up using standard Phillips. Beautiful. I like it. And of course I probably should have uh, done this before the uh, huge massive uh, <laughs> RAM modules went in but ah well. And there we go. Our heatsink bracket is installed. Our four pillars there and we're ready to install our heatsink. Now what we've got is this bracket in here just slides in here and it's got a springy little screw in it like that, which then screws down into the base of that, which then goes down into these and puts pressure down on the heatsink. And we need the thermal paste, of course, but uh, it's all rather neat. And it looks like it's actually going to fit uh, with, you know, uh, five to eight millimeters spare or something like that. Pretty good. I like it. Not a problem. But hopefully it sit fits inside the case, the height. Mm, I don't know. Look at this. Oh, there's not much room to spare in there. I've put my motherboard in there, but without any standoffs, um, that is, yeah, it's very, very close to uh, <laughs> touching that. So hopefully the standoffs for the motherboard aren't that big. Well, I've probably got, I don't know, eight millimeters spare or something. So yeah, it might just fit. And we'll just do the uh, standoffs, and uh, once again, we uh, they assume you haven't got a socket driver, so they give you a Phillips attachment for that. Excellent. So uh, I'll put these in the, uh, screw these in the mounting holes for the, these are the standoffs for the motherboard. All right, I've installed the motherboard on the correct standoffs, and uh, it looks like, folks, that is going to fit a treat. Yep, no drama whatsoever. Beautiful. The uh, Cooler Master uh, Evo 212 heatsink fits in the Silencio 512 case. Well, it's not surprising considering that uh, they're both the same brand. So now it's time to apply our thermal paste. So we'll peel this off. We want a very thin layer of uh, thermal paste quite even and uh, so unfortunately you're not going to get uh, even with a uh, 
syringe like this. So, uh, oop. we have to uh, move it around like that, and probably that is enough, I'd suspect, for the whole thing. It should be enough, but we need to get a uh, nice even coat on that. I probably should use like a a credit card or something to uh, smooth that down, really. I mean, it's going to squeeze out when you press it on, but uh, so I think that will probably do nicely. You just want to uh, cover that entire uh, copper surface there, and it should uh, spread nice and evenly and get a bit of ooze out once you... Uh, uh, put force down on it on the uh, CPU, but yeah, really, you know, you want the thinnest layer possible. Um, that's the idea. The idea of thermal paste is just to fill in the tiny, minute uh, gaps between the um, level surfaces of the copper and the top of the uh, CPU um, case there. So, you know, just those tiny little gaps. I mean, you know, we're talking like, you know, in the order of microns or something like that. It is quite small. So, the less thermal paste, the better. Now this heatsink bracket, before you install it, you want to get the screws into the center position here. It could be hard afterwards. Well, that's for this socket because they've got just like a, you know, a different uh, sliding position in there for the different uh, types of chips you've got. So if you don't have it in the right position before you put it in, I'm guessing it could be a right royal pain in the ass. All right, now is the time to install it. So I'll put that bracket uh, through there like that. It's got a little retention hook in there to keep it in position a little bit and uh, then we want to place it over and uh, line up that and sit it on there and hopefully our screws will line up, our screw holes will line up and uh, Bob will be our uncle. You might, yeah, you can adjust the rotation of this thing around like that, but it's going to always uh, get you right in the center, I believe. And then we want to screw in number one here. And then you want to do, after you've done that, you want to do the opposite corner over here. It's all very medieval, this uh, process. And then, once, so once you've done the two, those two corners, then you start on the other two corners. And ta-da, we're in. Um, it's not possible to really over-tighten these. They uh, just do up and uh, they're quite well designed with the spring uh, attachments in them. And we can rotate that heat sink just a little bit, rotate it around its axis because it's just pushing down on the one center uh, point down in there really. So uh, that's why we can still do that. But there you go. Um, ah, oh, actually, heh, looks like I've got to take doll to get the fan back in. I've got. Looks like I probably have to take out the memory again, but that's no drama. Then we clip the fan on. Oops. And the fan in this is just—it's a Cooler Master uh, brand made in China. So I don't know who actually. Uh, DF, I don't know, Delta fans, is it? I don't know. It's probably not manufactured by a Cooler Master. One of the major uh, fan manufacturers would do it. But as I said, um, it's uh, probably, um, on low mode anyway, one of the most silent uh, fans on the market. So, of course, you've got to get the airflow right. There's an airflow marker on there, if you can see that. So it blows through like this. So here's the back of the case back of the case is going to be out here so you want the air to blow from this side because the air is coming in through the front of the case around in the case and you want it to blow through this way out here and out your back fan so we definitely want to put it on like so too easy done uh no folks we have a fail it looks like my estimate uh back that you know this would uh, wouldn't foul with these uh, um, memory modules they do it fouls so that's you know that's uh, that's hopeless there's the slot there and there's the fan so um, bummer um, what I'm gonna have to do because I want the I want the air to blow out this side what I'm gonna have to do is take the fan back off and actually reverse this bracket I think I'm gonna have to I assume I can put it on the other side and then clip the fan on this side so it actually sucks the air 
through like that instead of uh, sucks the air through the uh, radiator instead of pushing through the radiator. One little touch they've got is these little uh, rubber uh, vibration isolation pads on the fan that actually go against the heatsink, so it uh, stop you know it stops any vibration uh, resonant modes between this and the radiator. Um, unfortunately, the screws are under that, so I'm going to have to uh, take those off. But they've actually provided four more spare ones. So when I take those off um, to access the screws and put this thing on the uh, put these brackets on the other side, then uh, I can just replace those. Excellent. And ta-da! There we have it. So we're uh, now um, uh, pulling the air through the heatsink like that. Probably not as uh, good, not as efficient, but uh, you know, yeah, you can go into all your th fan uh, theory. And I've actually got some. Uh, I've actually done uh, measurements and data on uh, that in terms of driving uh, ducting and uh, stuff like that. But, you know, because it can suck uh, air from the uh, vortex, you know, from the sides here and then uh, forms all sorts of vortices and stuff. But anyway, that is, it's going to be good enough for Australia. So there you go. I don't know how long that's taken us. Uh, quite some time to get to the point where uh, we have a fully installed uh, i7 processor on this Zeus motherboard with our dodgy <laughs> uh, pull fan instead of push. Ah well, can't have it all. <gasps> Let's install it in the case. And I guess we may as well install our uh, little metal connector shield on the back. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. It's got the RFI um, uh, tabs on there to uh, make good RFI contact onto the case of the uh, Ethernet connectors and uh, HDMI connectors and stuff like that. So that sort of just have to hold that in place, I think, when you slide this into the case. Yeah, as it turns out, that's uh, rather tricky to uh, get that sucker in there and the motherboard lined up and uh, with the mounting holes and it for all to clip in ca into place and not to get the little RFI tabs down inside the connectors instead of on the top. And it's a bit messy, but. Uh, you shouldn't have to force anything in the end. It's uh, it all seems to go in quite well. So if you're forcing it, you're doing it wrong. You have to force it to get it in there. But if you have to force and then screw at the same time, you're uh, you obviously haven't got it right. So this motherboard has uh, six screws on it, and uh, which isn't that many um, compared to a lot of the boards from the olden days. If I remember rightly, but back then every machine was uh, uh, custom. You know, they didn't, they hadn't standardised on uh, all these form factors and things like that. So, so there's our installed RFI shield in place. It also uh, helps with the airflow as well. It means air's not uh, sort of, you know, being sucked in or coming out the back there. It's all coming out of the fan. But that's our fully installed Zeus. Motherboard in our Silencio 550 case with heatsink and processor. Oh, almost ready to go. Just the power supply and uh, hard drives and paraphernalia. So as you can see with the uh, fan mounted on this side to actually um, suck the air through the radiator like that. Not absolutely uh, ideal, but uh, I think it's uh, still going to work a treat. So what we've got in terms of uh, airflow here is we've got the uh, grill down the side here where the air comes in uh, filtered through uh, the fan here into the chassis and then basically this is uh, sucking whatever residual air is on this side so you'll get a natural uh, flow like that and through and of course uh, most of the hot air is going to uh, rise inside the case as well assuming that you've keep it uh, vertical like this and it's going to be it's going to be reasonably okay about uh, sucking that through the radiator and pushing it out the back fan there so that's not too bad and then we've got our power supply uh, down the bottom of course and uh, we're about to install that now and uh, I haven't um, you I'm so used to uh, power supplies um, you know the older uh, style ones with the fan with the crusty little fan on the back like that I'm not used to the uh, new ones with the big uh, fan on the uh, bottom of this thing so uh, totally different but um, you know I <laughs> wouldn't go back to the old days of old PC cases I mean this is a magic case it's absolutely amazing what you get for a hundred bucks these days absolutely incredible and they're all standardized so all the motherboards fit and oh, you don't have to dick around and it's not just 
you know, really crusty, um, you know, uh, sort of folded sheet metal, unpowder coated, all that sort of stuff. It's all properly powder coated, really very nice cases, very nice designs. I really like them. You don't need screws anymore for your hard drives and, and things like that. Just fantastic. So yeah, last time I built a, uh, a desktop PC, I mean, you know, you didn't even have heat sinks on your chips because the things just, you know, they weren't that powerful and that uh, fast enough uh, chewing all that power. You just didn't need it. It, it really wasn't an issue you know you'd have like a 50 watt power supply or something like that crazy and now it's power supply time and you watch all of the fanboys come out of the uh, woodwork and uh, complain that I've got probably the shittiest one on the market doesn't have this brand of cap that brand of cap blah 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 yeah whatever let's crack the thing open and uh, have a look inside though see what we've got and of course there's the uh, Huge fan on the bottom. I don't know where, you know, it says it's re, you know, it's low noise, but, uh, you know, I it's not um, specifically built down to a price. Oh, look, I mean, it is built down to a price. Warranty void if removed sticker. <coughs> yeah, screw that. No pun intended. And there it is. And that's actually rather nice and clean. I don't uh, mind that at all. Very uh, minimalist and... Uh, Let's just have a very quick uh, poke around here. Looks like we've got some exposed uh, connections here on the power switch and the IEC mains connector. They haven't bothered to uh, heat shrink those at all, but you know, I mean, you don't necessarily have to. We've got uh, our X and Y uh, class caps there, and uh, oh, we've got a fuse on board, directly soldered. They didn't bother uh, so uh, socketing that. They saved a couple of cents there. Single-sided uh, phenolic base board, of course, uh, standard fare in whatever uh, power supply you're going to get. And uh, actually, it looks like they've got some uh, decent input uh, filter in there. They've got some common mode chokes, and they've got uh, the filter caps, so that's probably a... Uh, yeah, is that a... Mov, that's a, yeah, that's a mov down in there, I believe, and uh, we've got our opto-couplers, and uh, internal heat sinks, yeah, we've got thermal grease on those, we'll check out the uh, brand of the cap in a second, but, you know, it's not too bad at all, they've, uh, have they put, added, look, they've added heat shrink to the uh, bridge rectifier there, they haven't used a uh, heat sink for that, uh, bridge rectifier at all, they uh, determined that they didn't have to, I guess. They've just uh, free stood that one with some extra uh, lead length on there to uh, get a bit more heat dissipation in the leads, but uh, nothing else. Is that a uh, is that a thermocouple on the heatsink there? I can't entirely... Yeah, I think it is. I think that's a thermocouple on the heatsink, I believe. So that's alright. It's got thermal protection. It looks alright. They've gunked down uh, the coils down in there just to stop them uh, vibrating and moving. Not bad. It's all right. Nothing wrong with this. Let's have a look at the brand of the cap. Yeah, sorry, it's a very difficult to get a shot down there, but it's an Aishi uh, brand. It looks like an LK series, and Aishi, you know, they're not uh, they're not uh, horrible. Yeah, you don't expect uh, to see Panasonic or uh, you know Nippon Chemicon or something in here, but. You know, I, it's okay. Ah, uh, the brand might be okay, but they've specced in the um, the LK series, and it's um, 85 degrees C for those ones. Rated uh, 2,000 hours at 85 degrees C uh, life. They haven't gone for the 105 degree C rated ones, the bastards. So they've cut cost there. So, you know, I guess thumbs down for... Uh, little bit of cost cut in there. They could have at least gone for the 105 degrees C rated cats, but this power supply is not going to get to uh, 80 degrees in my system anyway. So uh, not, uh, you know, it's 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 going to be adequate. I mean, you know, we'll see how it goes anyway, but uh, would have preferred to see that 105. But anyway, this is the value series power supply, bottom of the line. So what do you expect? But they do have 105 degrees C rated uh a issue down in there, which is okay. These green GF ones, I have no idea, haven't seen before. And unfortunately, down in there, we have a crappy Capson brand uh, one, not the best at all. Uh, they are uh, 
I think they are 105 degrees C rated though, but yeah, this is what you get in the value series. I pretty much, uh, pretty much what I expected really for the bottom of the range price. And like I said, I've bought a cheap power supply. I knew it. I got a cheap power supply, and uh, but I don't think it's going to be an issue because um, this thing, I'm not, you know, gaming 24 hours a bloody day with two video cards taking you know hundreds of watts um this thing is going to take like you know a hundred watts total when it's rendering or something probably i think it takes in the order of like 50 watts or something because i'm using the integrated uh, graphics card or i'm going to start out using the integrated graphics card so um yeah it's like you know it's like whatever you know it's probably going to last a it's likely to last a long time because it's a um, highly uh, over spec to uh, drive the Intel. Maybe not if I had the AMD processor. The AMD processor takes a lot more than the uh, Intel one. But um, anyway, I think it's going to be adequate. I see things really haven't changed in terms of you know lack of mounting holes for the board. I mean you you plug in this huge connector here for the power into there and you know if you don't support the bottom of the board you're liable to crack something i mean because the screw holes are right back sort of you know in line with this and there's another like inch and a half or something at least maybe you know two inches to the edge of the board where this connector pushes in i mean just crazy this requires quite a amount of force because it's got a uh, it's got a lock connector on the side and yeah you really have to get your fingers under that board to support it when you push it in and I rather like this. This is a bit of uh, fortuitous luck. The uh, ex the uh, separate 12 volt uh, connector, which they've um, very nicely encased in the uh, uh, those um, mesh sleeves, just nicely reaches almost perfectly up over the fan of the heatsink and then down into the 12 volt connector on the motherboard. Very nice, spot on. I like it. He's uh leads for the case are absolutely enormous you can almost meet, reach to another machine that's a usb uh, 3.0 and that will plug uh, directly into the new usb 3.0 header connector down on the board beautiful and by the way the bottom of this uh, corsair case quite quite nice they've got these uh, uh, rubber uh, feet on them for uh, vibration uh, isolation and another filter for the power supply fan very nice now it's a uh, solid state hard drive time two and a half uh, inch hard drive and well it just slots in anywhere you like beautiful and of course, uh, for maximum speed, that's going to go into the uh, 6 gig uh, SATA connector. I've actually only got uh, two of those. So, um, uh, yeah, um, uh, bro, I'm not sure what I was going to do there because I'll probably run a like a single second drive. I was going to uh, install like a RAID uh, system, but I think I'll just uh, have the second, maybe, maybe the second drive on the uh, 6 uh, gig uh, port and the, um, unfortunately, the uh, external... Um, uh, SATA uh, external uh, docking drive up here will have to be three gigs per second. Still, three gigs per second. Oh, screaming. Now let's see how this. Uh, I just got a generic uh, CD uh, DVD burner here, a Zeus one, and uh, I'm going to see how this goes into this uh, lock. Uh, open. There we go. See if this just adequately slides into here. Uh, no. No, something's, something's not giving. There we go. That slides in and line it up with the front and just lock. And that's, yeah, I can't push on that anymore. Very nice. One thing I'm actually quite amazed at is they still have the PS2 connector on here. Can you believe it? After all these years, you would think that, you know, well, I'm sure the biases do work with uh, like a USB uh, keyboard these days when you boot up so you know I <laughs> it's just legacy I mean uh, you know they've still got the VGA uh, connector on here as well I mean absolutely incredible all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the hard drives for later um, I'm going to power this thing up now I've got uh, these are my uh, raid one of my raid uh, sets but I've got a, another Seagate uh, 7200 that uh, I'm going to install in here as my video rendering uh, drive as well. Um, I'm short on SATA cables actually, um, 
But anyway, um, it's it's ready to power up. So I'm going to hook up a monitor, keyboard, and mouse, and uh, see if we can uh, fire this thing up. And hopefully, the magic smoke doesn't escape. And if you wanted to see the uh, CPU bracket on the back, there it is on the bottom side of the case. All right, folks, here we go. The moment of truth. I'm going to power this uh, sucker on and uh, see what we get. I've got an old school uh, VGA monitor hooked up. I've got a USB keyboard and mouse. I do have a backup uh, PS2 keyboard if we really need it, but I'd be surprised if a modern bias uh, couldn't detect a USB keyboard and, uh, well, you don't need a mouse for the bias. In fact, I think this one might have a graphical user interface for the bias. Anyway, here we go. I'm about to plug it in and, uh, well, fingers crossed. Okay, power supply didn't blow up. That's good. There's no standby light ready. I'm about to push the power button on the top of the panel and yep, fans are powered on. There we go. It beeped. It beeped. Ah, oh, Zeus, check it out. Yes, delete. Ah, oh, 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 stop, stop. New CPU installed. Beautiful. Winner, folks. Absolute winner. And yes, the BIOS has detected the uh, mouse, the keyboard, uh, two hubs, one drive, generic storage device, IDE drive zero, that a hard drive, and it's detected the uh, DVD writer as well, new CPU installed, please enter the F1 to run setup. Ah, oh, and there it is, i7-3770K, my installation was uh, bang on with the CPU, it defaults to 3.5 gig, which is its uh, nominal uh, clock rate, but we can overclock that uh, later in uh, coming videos, but we are a winner, folks, so it should actually boot. Here we go. Look at this graphical user interface. Oh, bias. Jeez, when I was a boy, uh, you know, jeez, you know, uh, biases were uh, uh, incredibly, incredibly basic, um, but this is, you know, absolutely incredible. Look at the, all the effort they're going to do with the clock up here. I mean, how much code has to go into the bias to do all this graphical interface? They've got to have all the graphics routines to uh, generate all this stuff, and it's just uh, it's just crazy. But anyway, you can overclock this sucker. Optimal, you can... No? Oh, hang on. No, that's the... Right, so that's power saving mode. Sort of, yeah. Power saving, normal, and Zeus optimal. <laughs> Boot priority, great. Oh, you can drag. Use the mouse to drag or keyboard and navigate boot priority. So you can drag and drop. Absolutely incredible. And we can, I don't think we can adjust the core voltage there. That's just showing us, uh, I think you can adjust the core voltage if you go in, but that's just showing us what it's currently set to. The uh, CPU fan, uh, 560 RPM. Let me see if I can hear it. Yeah, I can hear it. I'm not sure which one it is, either the... Um, uh, the front panel one, or the rear panel, or the power supply, I'm not uh, sure, or it could be the fan. <laughs> you know, there are four, uh, yes, there are four fans in this thing um, at the moment. So, but it's very quiet, and I haven't even got the uh, soundproofing uh, panels on the side yet. So, um, it's basically gone into the ambient noise of the room, pretty much. I mean, I can hear it, but I'm not going to be able to do audio proper audio tests in the lab here, because there's too much, just the aircon noise in the roof from the other... Um, offices next door and stuff is uh, is uh, way above the um, uh, threshold of the fans in this thing. So we have a winner. Different language? No, I'll stick with English. <laughs> Exit. Advanced mode. Boot menu. Advanced menu. Advanced mode. Enter advanced mode. Yeah, why not? Whoa. Here we go. AI tweaker. Here we go. We can tweak all sorts of stuff. Turbo ratio. I won't do this in this video. I'm not going to overclock the thing at all. I just want to uh, get the thing. I was just happy for it not to blow up. And uh, my $350 uh, CPU um, worked. So pretty happy, ha happy with that monitor. There you go. CPU temperature is at uh, 32 degrees. It's doing absolutely nothing. It's just running the bias, of course. Motherboard temperature. I wonder what the mother what's that motherboard temperature is. Is that the Z80, Z77 chipset? I'm assuming, um, or is that just like an ambient sensor on the motherboard or something? I I don't know. Um, but yeah, fan speed, 600 RPM, very low. Chassis fan speed, yeah, the chassis fan is just hooked up to 12 volts. This uh, this fan over here, folks, is uh, on the front panel. 
down here is just uh, just hooked permanently into 12 volts. I haven't uh, uh, got anything uh, controlling the speed of that at all, so it's just going fixed speed. But uh, 12 volt voltage, 5.08, 12, yeah, 3.3. .3. CPU voltage is uh, running at just over a volt. Core speed, uh, core voltage. CPU, Q fan control, enable CPU fan, low limit. What's the low limit? Oh, there you go. Like you can see, set the CPU to 100 RPM if you want. Jeez, really low. Why not? CPU fan profile. Ah, wonderful stuff. Chassis fans, all the fans. Lovely. Anti surge support. Ooh, you can disable anti surge. If enable system will have. Uh, UVP or over voltage. Oh, okay. Under voltage protection or over voltage protection function. Oh, well, yeah, we want to enable that. It's enabled by default. So, yeah, tons of stuff for the thermal uh, management of this thing. Really quite impressive. And booting up, full screen logo, post delay time. Oh, I don't want to actually delay anything. You can just, I want, you know. Um, oh, to easily enter the bias setup. Okay, yeah. So we'll just leave it at three seconds for now. And uh, fast boot, blah, 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 blah. All the other paraphernalia. Next boot after AC power loss. Oh, look, a normal boot after AC power loss. That's handy. So, neat. I like it. And the tweaker. Yes, yeah, so I've been in there. And then you can adjust all the all your there's power management, USB, SATA, all that sort of jazz. You can uh, tweak all that sort of stuff till the cows come home. I like this graphical user interface bias. It's really quite nice. Um, easy flash utility. I assume I've got the latest bias in here. It's a brand new motherboard, but uh, I'll, once I've got it all set up, I'll have a look to make sure I've got the latest. And uh, Well, that's really quite neat. So um, that should just work. I should be able to put in my uh, Windows 7 64-bit. Uh, uh, um, CD and um, install that on the solid state uh, drive. No, I'm not going to run Windows 8. I don't know anything about Windows 8. I have a license of Windows 7 Pro 64 bit. It all works, so I'm going to stick with that. <gasps> Time to initialize. Well, uh, Windows 7 Pro is installing 64 bit. Uh, I did one uh, partition of 128 gig, although it did uh, uh, automatically add a system uh, partition in there of like 100 meg or uh, something like that. And it uh, looks like it is going to take a while. Um, <laughs> well, I'm not sure how long I am actually timing it. But uh, it said it needed about 32 gig or thereabouts uh, free space. So that's not bad on my 128 gig solid state drive. Although most of the apps I'm going to install on my uh, secondary drive. But of course, uh, things like my, um, you know, my video editing app, uh, you know, Sony uh, Movie Studio, of course, I'll install that on the uh, C drive because... Um, on the uh, solar state drive just for some extra performance but most of the other apps I don't really care about will go on the secondary drive well I got to admit this thing is quite silent um, it really just um, goes into the background noise if you put your head near it you can you know you can actually hear it but geez it's pretty darn impressive let me tell you and uh, it's uh, running the uh, CD-ROM at the moment I've put the side panels on I'm not sure which is the no noisiest uh, component I'll have to probably make that a uh, separate video just go through uh, checking each of the individual fans seeing which is the uh, uh, loudest and possibly um, uh, replacing them with those uh, silent uh, or those very low noise uh, Noct Noctua or brand or whatever uh, fans they are that I've got after I clean them up so I'm pretty happy with that. We're still uh, installing Windows. Some time to go, but yeah, it's a winner. Well, we're almost done completing the installation. Uh, 14 minutes. Not too bad, I guess. And it's complete. There you go. Took 37 gig on my drive, on my 128 gig solid state drive. I've got, uh, well, uh, sorry, uh, 34.7 gig and uh, 76.9, almost 78 gig left. Heaps. All right, now I've got all my drives installed. I've got my uh, solid 128 gig solid state uh, primary boot drive. I've got my 2 gig 7200 RPM uh, Seagate 
uh, video rendering drive. I've got my media drive up here that I originally had in a separate networked uh, media box so that we can, you know, uh, watch uh, TV shows and stuff like that. It's hooked up to my media box in the lounge room. But now I'm just going to run it through here. Doesn't need a separate box, separate power adapter, all that sort of stuff. That's a 1.5 gig uh, Samsung. And with the um, uh, CD drive up here, the DVD drive, and also the external uh, SATA um, docking station, I've used up five out of my six um, <laughs> SATA connectors. Unbelievable. Imagine if you're running like a software RAID or something as well. Forget it. And this sucker only draws about 0.4 watts in standby mode. Not bad at all. So let's uh, boot the thing up and uh, see what power consumption we get for just uh, idling Windows. Windows boots are pretty quick though. With the uh, solid state drive, I've got the uh, 3 second uh, ASUS power up. There we go, 88 watts. This thing's got like a 5 second uh, cycle time or something. 5 second measurement period or something to that effect maybe 10 but we're talking 80 odd watts windows boot in and windows is in we're in like flynn there we go there's our windows boot completely clean system of course okay it's dropped down a bit there we go 58 watts let's see if that changes 51 okay so we're probably talking 50 watts on idle which is basically uh, what I was expecting and what I was told to expect um, for an Intel i7 system it would have been much higher I think it would have been like 30 watts more like 80 watts if we had the AMD uh, 8 core processor or something in there the Intel is very low power processor especially when it's not uh, doing anything so there you go I'm um, just idle 50 watts so I you know um, that's running uh, two hard drives by the way, plus the DVD drives in there, but that's probably shut down. Um, so a solid state drive plus two um, SATA um, hard drives as well. Not bad. And of course the big test, how fast does it render? Well, I've installed Handbrake and I've got my system monitor there. I just ran it. Uh, the test file, if you haven't been following in the forums, you won't know what this means, but my previous one did it in over two minutes. And this one, with the same test file, took 52 seconds, folks. Fantastic. Let's run it again. Here we go. Start. This is my, uh, and bingo. Average frames per second. My other one, like, averages like 20 or 22, 24, something like that. Um, slightly less than uh, real time. And this one's doing 70 frames per second. Average 75. There you go. Average of 75 frames per second on that uh, HD test video. Brilliant! So I've more than doubled my speed, exactly as I expected. And you can see my uh, CPU cores um, over here. They haven't uh, pegged 100%, whereas they were pegging full 100% before on uh, all, well, all four cores plus the four uh, virtual cores. So there you go. This machine is a winner and I haven't even tweaked it yet I haven't tweaked it for speed or anything like that it's just a stock installation and bang there it is it takes 52 seconds to uh, render that test video file so man imagine what's gonna well I can get some improvement by overclocking this thing and doing stuff like that and by the way that is reading and writing the file to the 7200 rpm uh, drive and as I've mentioned before it Really, drive speed has nothing to do with it. It's all CPU power here. Even the slowest hard drive can easily um, uh, keep up with the data rates uh, involved here. So, not a problem. That's reading and writing to the same um, secondary SATA 7200 RPM drive. Beautiful. Absolute winner. I'm going to call it quits there. I have to finish uh, setting up this machine. It's probably going to take me another day to install all the software and everything like that. And I will follow up with some real, uh, you know, direct uh, comparisons between um, this and my uh, previous uh, notebook setup. So that'll be a separate video. Hope you liked it. It was just me assembling a bloody computer, really. Anyway, catch you next time.